This is a true story of how a small-town businessman took the McDonald's brand from its original founders and made billions of dollars from it. Today we will be watching a movie based on the real-life story of Ray Kroc, called The Founder. The movie starts in the year 1954 with Ray Kroc struggling to sell milkshake machines to some drive-in restaurants across the country. He seems annoyed by the inefficient services of the small food businesses that take forever to deliver his food order, and when the food arrives, it's usually not what he ordered. Although Ray and his wife, Ethel have saved enough money for the two of them to live a comfortable life in Arlington Heights, Illinois, Ray is unable to get settled. He wants to do something for himself and earn more money. At home and also while driving, he keeps listening to a motivational speech that says persistence and determination alone are all powerful. The speech motivates him to create his future and become a successful person. One day after being rejected by a couple of restaurants for his milkshake machine, he calls June Martino, his secretary. She informs him that she received an order for six milkshake mixers from a restaurant in California. Ray thinks that she misunderstood the order as it is an unusually large order compared to the orders that he usually gets. So he calls the restaurant to confirm the order himself. To his surprise, the order of six milkshake mixers is actually wrong and that they want eight milkshake mixers instead. He then confirms the address of the restaurant, which is located in San Bernardino in Southern California. Out of curiosity, Ray decides to travel all the way to San Bernardino himself to see what kind of a restaurant requires eight milkshake mixers. Upon reaching there, he is amazed to see a walk-up restaurant, which is extremely busy. The name of the restaurant is McDonald's and Ray is mesmerized to see the speedy service, top quality food, disposable packaging, and a family-friendly environment. He sees long queues of people waiting for their turn to place their orders. Ray joins a queue and is surprised by how quickly the queue is moving. In no time, his order is processed and he is unable to believe that it's his order. He is surprised to see an entirely different concept of a restaurant. The food comes in disposable wrappings as compared to the old-fashioned silverware and he can carry it wherever he wants without any hesitation. He sits on a bench nearby and notices other people enjoying the food. Coincidentally, he meets one of the restaurant's owners, Mac McDonald. Ray appreciates him for his marvelous efforts in creating this walk-up restaurant. Mac, being a nobleman, is delighted to hear Ray's gratitude and eagerly offers him a tour of his restaurant kitchen. During the kitchen tour, Mac explains to Ray that the main goal to achieve in this game of fast food restaurant is speed. Ray is surprised to see the custom-built tools in the kitchen that help them achieve speedy services and also the employees' efficient work ethic. The custom-built tools and machines help them make one hamburger in 30 seconds, and that's the reason behind their successful running restaurant. Ray then meets Dick McDonald, who is busy figuring out the right temperature for cooking the fries. Since the restaurant is too chaotic and they can't really talk much there, Ray invites them to dinner to hear their story. At the dinner, Ray learns about the brothers' origin story of McDonald's. Turns out they came to Hollywood to work for films and eventually opened a beautiful movie theater in Glendora, which was forced to close due to the Great Depression. So they opened a food stand of hot dogs and orange juice in Arcadia. But since there weren't enough people in Arcadia, they decided to relocate it to San Bernardino. Due to the shortage of money, they moved the stand that they already had, put it on a truck, and started to sell hot dogs. Later, they upgraded the truck into a McDonald's famous barbecue drive-in restaurant with 27 items on the menu and uniformed waitresses bringing food right to the customer's car. At first, the restaurant did quite well, but later sales started to level off as there were a lot of complications with drive-in restaurants. The McDonald's brothers weren't getting the right kind of customers, and they knew they had to change their business model if they wanted to continue. So after brainstorming a few ideas and looking at their current sales, they realized that selling hamburgers, french fries, and soft drinks generated a major chunk of profit, almost 87%. So they decided to focus only on these three items whilst dropping everything else. They decided to make it a walk-up restaurant, where customers would need to walk in and not drive in, eliminating the need of team members required at a drive-in restaurant. They further planned to use disposable food packaging to reduce silverware costs. They decided the tagline of their restaurant would be orders ready in 30 seconds, and that's how they were going to attract customers. To implement their speedy delivery system, the brothers and a group of employees spent an afternoon on a tennis court, drawing their crazy plan with chalk to determine the most efficient plan for the kitchen to speed up food preparation. After hours of making changes and testing the efficiency of the kitchen design, 
they'd finally have the perfect kitchen setup which would speed up their food making and delivering service. But business didn't take off so quickly even after that. The customers weren't really happy to get out of their car to get their orders, and people weren't getting used to the new food packaging. But the McDonald's brothers didn't give up and tried everything they could to give their customers the right kind of service. And then it all paid off, as McDonald's became the most popular restaurant in the town. Ray is enthralled to listen to the brother's story and he is unable to sleep that night. The next day, he proposes that the brothers franchise the restaurant. According to Ray, this unbelievable establishment should be expanded so that everyone around the world can experience it. Both the brothers claim that they had already tried to open franchises in several areas, but had difficulty maintaining quality standards in each of them. While trying to convince the brothers for franchising, Ray notices a painting on a wall of an unusual building. Mac explains that it was a concept design created by Dick for their franchise in Phoenix. This sends Ray down to Phoenix, where he sees the failed McDonald's franchise restaurant with the Golden Arches. Seeing this, Ray becomes determined to try to convince the brothers of his idea. He returns home and tells his wife about the restaurant that he has just seen in Phoenix with a fully automated system. He tells her that he wants to invest in this revolutionary business and become a part of it. His wife, on the other hand, is not so happy about this idea. She is satisfied with what they have and wants to live with it happily rather than risking it all. They both argue when Ray asks her to support him in his vision. The next day, Ray goes back to his old job as a traveling salesman. He is upset after being ignored by restaurants and can't stop thinking about the restaurant idea. Despite his wife's disapproval, he goes to McDonald's to convince the brothers to allow him to lead their franchising efforts. Dick is reluctant about the idea of franchising again as he is concerned about his brother's health, who went into the hospital the last time their idea of franchise failed. Both the brothers give it a thought and decide to finally agree with Ray. However, they decide to keep a tighter leash on everything and a complete oversight. Soon after, a contract is drafted for the brothers and Ray, with a major condition that no franchise decisions can be made without the brothers' approval. Ray quickly signs the paperwork and then heads to Des Plaines, Illinois to open up his McDonald's franchise. But finding funding is difficult since most of the investors refuse to invest in his franchise, and so Ray is forced to take a loan. His home is leveraged, but he does not tell his wife about this. Ray waits for the final approval of the McDonald brothers for substantial alterations that he has suggested to be made. However, the brothers are taking too long to respond, more than Ray had anticipated. He calls them to ask them how long will it take for the approval. Dick replies that he has asked his architect to thoroughly review the alterations to make sure everything is safe and up to code. Ray gets pissed off, as he has a lot of his own money invested. Finally, work for Ray's new restaurant starts and he makes sure that the operations run exactly as they did in San Bernardino. However, he clashes with the McDonald brothers when he tries to get sponsorship money from Coca-Cola by putting their name on the menu boards. While Ray sees it as a great business opportunity, Dick McDonald claims that they won't commercialize their restaurant as it is against their core beliefs. Sue so the new restaurant is up and running and Ray is excited about it. He manages to keep the quality control in check and also helps his employees. However, his wife Ethel is still extremely skeptical of his latest venture. He apologizes to his wife for neglecting her and promises to take her to the country club the next day. At the country club, Ray pitches the idea to open a McDonald's franchise to his fellow members, who are wealthy investors. At first, they mock him but soon are ready and willing to get into the new business venture. Deals for the new franchises are made in consent with the McDonald brothers. However, the brothers are a bit skeptical about how they will be able to maintain the quality in so many franchises altogether. One day, Ray decides to visit a franchise in Schaumburg. Upon reaching there, he is infuriated to see the new franchise lacking quality control due to poor management ethic. The franchise lacks a family-friendly environment, and there is trash all over the floors. He is even more enraged to see the poor quality hamburgers. So, he rushes to the franchise owner to show him the stale hamburger. Ray tries to tell the franchisees to do better as their lack of work ethic will doom the original franchise efforts. But when he discovers that they don't seem to care about the franchise standards as much as he does, he cancels his and his wife's membership in the country club and looks for other ways to recruit new franchisees. Ethel is pissed about it as she always knew that Ray's new venture will be a flop. One day, Ray meets a man named Leonard Rosenblatt, who inspires him that he can do anything to make a living. So, Ray helps him open a franchise in Waukegan. 
Leonard runs the franchise according to rules and regulations and maintains its standard. Eventually, Ray learns that franchising to middle-class investors can prove beneficial for him as they are willing to follow the McDonald's formula. So new franchises begin opening across the Midwest, with Ray representing himself as the founder of McDonald's. Eventually, McDonald's franchises began opening everywhere from Dayton, Madison, Milwaukee, Grand Rapids, Kenosha, and Decatur. The McDonald brothers are annoyed to see Ray calling his own restaurant, McDonald's No Own, when in reality that is the second franchise. Ray travels to Minnesota to attend the opening of the McDonald's franchise there. Later that evening, he goes to a fancy restaurant to have dinner. There he meets Raleigh Smith, the owner of the restaurant, who offers him to open another franchise of McDonald's in Minneapolis. Ray meets Raleigh's wife, Juan, and he seems to be instantly attracted to her beauty. They both sing and play piano together. Ray then decides to expand the business to Midwest, but to his surprise, he runs out of money. The 1.4% of profits that he gets from the McDonald brothers seem insufficient to him, so he calls the brothers to renegotiate the original contract. However, the brothers refuse to increase his share of profits. Soon, Ray finds out that the refrigeration costs of storing ice cream for milkshakes at the restaurant are eating his profit margin. He seems immensely tensed and is unable to think straight. Ray eventually visits Joan and Raleigh's business. When Joan learns about Ray's refrigeration issues, she suggests they use a powdered milk mix that tastes exactly like a real milkshake. Ray eagerly proposes his economizing idea to Dick McDonald, but is once again refused. When Ray tries to get another loan to help his financial problems, he meets a young man named Harry Sonneborn. Sonneborn is given access to the company's finances and quickly discovers solutions to Ray's financial problems. He suggests that Ray should take this franchising business as a real estate business, if he wants to make money. Sonneborn suggests Ray to buy lands and later lease it to new franchise owners to open up a McDonald's restaurant. If he does so, Ray will have a separate income stream that he won't have to share with the McDonald brothers. Sonneborn's suggestion is successful and Ray soon starts earning more and then he changes the name of his company to Franchise Realty Corporation. When Dick McDonald calls to inquire about this, Ray claims that his corporation is separate from McDonald's and is not covered by their contract. Soon following his newfound success, Ray one night over dinner tells his wife that he wants a divorce. Ray is ready to give everything to Ethel, except for any shares in McDonald's. Ray also hires lawyers and is ready to pay any amount of money to get out of contract with the McDonald brothers. Ray's actions irritate the brothers even more when they receive a letter with the official letterhead of McDonald's Corporation and Ray's name listed as president. Seeing this, Dick threatens to sue Ray as they're the original founders of the brand. But Ray doesn't back down and instead tells the brothers that since he has become really rich with the real estate business, he can easily bury them in court cases. Despite being the original McDonald's founder, they simply don't have enough money to battle Ray in court. This horrible situation sends Mac into diabetic shock. After Mac is admitted to the hospital, Ray arrives with flowers and a letter containing a blank check, simply indicating that Ray intends to buy out the brothers' share of the company. The brothers set their terms after knowing that they can't win with Ray. The brothers agree to a $2.7 million lump sum payment, ownership of their original restaurant in San Bernardino, and 1% of the company's profit annually. While Ray is willing to sign off on almost everything, he refuses to include the royalty in the settlement and instead offers it as a handshake deal, which the brothers agree to. Following the negotiations, Dick runs into Ray in a restroom and questions Ray that he have everything about the company to him, so why did he not copy the idea and open his own restaurant? Ray claims that such an action would have failed and that the true value of McDonald's is the name itself. Soon, the brothers are forced to change their restaurant's name to the Big M as they're no longer the owners of the McDonald's brand. Moreover, Ray builds a new McDonald's franchise directly across the street, giving some tough competition to the McDonald brothers. The film ends in 1970 and we see Ray with his new wife. Juan preparing a speech in his luxurious mansion. In the speech, Ray praises himself for his success. He says that the reason behind his success is persistence. This was the same motivational speech that we heard earlier in the film. In Postscript, we learn that the San Bernardino McDonald's was so popular, it forced the original stand to close, and the 1% royalty fee that Ray had agreed over a handshake. Well, the McDonald brothers never got any money from Ray. If Ray had stayed true to his words, each of the brothers would have gotten $200 million a year. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, 
please leave a like and comment down your thoughts on the movie. And before you leave, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.